Hello, my friends, family, esteemed colleagues. Recently, I've been asked to talk about addictions and mental health. And uh, of course, I'm not expert in this. I can just approach it from the clear mind point of view. And uh, since I'm not an expert, I'm going to check here with the experts. Okay, so mental problems, they call them mental, mental illness or disease or disorders. Uh, and they say it's a wide range of mental health conditions that affect your mood, thinking, behavior. Uh, examples could be depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, eating disorders may result from it, and addictive behavior. So this is why I incorporate addiction to this. And uh, as usual, we go from the symptoms because diagnosis and labeling of something being a disease or disorder is uh, basically a symbol. You just attach a symbol to whatever the symptoms are. So what are the symptoms of mental disorders or diseases? Feeling sad or down, confused thinking, reduced ability to concentrate, excessive fears, extreme mood swings, let's say from extreme high to low, withdrawal from friends and activities, significant tiredness, low energy or problem sleeping. Okay, this is becoming also mental disorder. Detachment from reality, delusions, paranoia, hallucinations, inability to cope with daily problems or stress. Trouble understanding, relating to situations. Now we go into addictions, problem with alcohol or drugs, drug use. <laughs> if you go into drug use, almost every American has a mental disorder. And we are not talking about what we call the forbidden drugs. We are talking about drugs pushed by doctors. They are way worse than those which are prohibited, like marijuana, for example. And then major changes in eating habits. Okay, so something is wrong with you if you suddenly decided to change your eating habits. It's interesting. Sex drive change. And uh, excessive anger. Suicidal thinking or suicidal tendencies, as they call it. And now they say, well, when do those occur? When to see a doctor? Well, whenever you go to see a doctor, it's a bad, bad choice, bad decision. Why? Well, we are going to discuss this. Okay, so, uh, helping a loved one. Your loved one shows signs of mental illness. Have an open and honest discussion with him about your concerns. Well, if some, someone is local, <laughs> you can have as open a discussion as you want. It's not going to work. 
uh, try, well, try to convince elderly that uh, taking the medication that they are taking now for 10 years or 20 years, the doctor prescribed, prescribed is actually not good, that they should stop. Well, it's very hard to do. This is addiction to doctors, to remedies. So, do we need psychiatrists for these things? Definitely not. But not to say that some psychiatrists do a really good job. Unfortunately, you will find very few of them, especially in developed countries, because money is the preference. And if you don't sell drug, you don't make money. Not enough. Kickbacks from the pharma industry are very hard to neglect. So every time you have a mental issue and you go and see a shrink or a doctor and they prescribe you some drugs to cope with this, well, they know that they are not working on healing you. They are working on their own pocketbook. So, why do some people have symptoms that I have mentioned earlier? We can start with childhood problems, which they have labeled ADHD. Okay? And uh, this is attention deficit. What happens with children? First, they are playful, as they should be. And then all of a sudden, they mellow down, and then they become cranky. Why? It's, it's happening almost to every child. And this is why so many children are being now medicated and diagnosed with ADHD, Attention Deficit Syndrome, and put on the drugs, which basically slow down their metabolism. They call them antidepressive drugs, which actually put you in depression. And when you're in depression, you cannot be excited. So you kind of keep mellow all the time. Why do children have this problem? Why are they happy and playful and then they go into complete reversal? Because every activity we do depends on the brain activity. And brain can function correctly and 100% only when it is properly energized. Remember, we are electronic robots. We need ele electricity. And although the heart produces it, we are programmed to still depend on like, I don't know, they say 20%, I think, I think it's way less, certain percentage of energy to come from cells and cellular electrical production. Now cells of plants are programmed to use energy from sugar. Whenever you look at a plant, you are looking at sugar. Plant fiber is cellulose, which is complex sugar. All the starch that they actually use in the form of glucose is always enveloped in cellulose. So no animal has have access to it. But plants have no problem with it. The energy is usually stored in roots. Down south, in South America, they call the plant yucca, that has huge roots, small plant, huge, thick roots, 
which they chop off part of it, they leave the pen going, they just chop some of the roots off, and then they boil them and taste like a potato. Another source for starch down in a jungle is banana. They use green banana because if they use ripe banana it falls apart. So they use green banana, they boil it. The heat is going to neutralize the toxin and it bursts the cellulose. So when you eat the boiled banana, it's like eating boiled potato. Cellulose has burst it, so now you have access to carbohydrate, which converts into glucose, which changes your genetics and forces complete change and shift of how your cells are going to produce energy. When you look at animals, we are looking basically on fat and protein because all the cellular membranes are made of cholesterol, fat and protein, tissues, fat and protein. The only difference is bone because bones are minerals sedimented minerals. This is why animals cannot survive without being correctly mineralized, which is not the case with the plants. You can grow plants hydroponically. Zero minerals. When you eat fruit, and fruit doesn't have smell and particular taste to it, this is your giveaway. It has no minerals. And when I spoke or talk about food, I always mention when I was young, when somebody brought a watermelon and brought it in a house, the whole house smelled on watermelon without even you cutting it. And when you cut it, the strong aroma came out. Now you cut the watermelon and you cannot smell nothing. You are eating it and you still don't smell the really taste of watermelon. I don't even think that the young generation knows how watermelon should actually taste and smell. Same is with strawberries. Once I had a chance in a field to stumble on wild strawberries. Wild strawberries are small and extremely flavorable and tasty. Extreme. It's so like biting into perfume. Then I also stumbled on a field where cultivated strawberries were neglected. So more times they gave a fruit, it became wilder and wilder. Strawberries became smaller and tastier, smaller and tastier. So I don't know how many years this field was neglected because there was also grass between the strawberries, but strawberries were uh, small for the size that now we get them. So they were like a maybe thumb size, much larger than wild ones, but much smaller than the new hybrids. But since they were turning into the wild, they smelled extremely good. They tasted like out of this world. It means they are correctly mineralized. Eating plants today brings you almost zero minerals. Yet we are being told that only through chelated minerals, through the plant, we can actually mineralize our body, which is lie. Animal cannot survive without being properly mineralized, would not have bones. We are saying, oh, bones, you know, this is different situation. Well, actually is not. Because we say bones are calcium. Not true. There is probably 30-40% calcium and 30% of different 
minerals, salts, embedded in there, plus the fiber. And animal fiber, again, is made out of protein. Is digestible to us. So, why am I going back to nutrition? Hmm? Because the brain correctly should be powered through heart and through fat, triglyceride. Once when we alter the cellular action by force feeding ourselves with starch, glucose, we are forcing the body to squirt insulin in because blood sugar rises immediately and hits the signaling button to release insulin, which then pushes the sugar into the cells as a stress response, because that's what we are programmed, all the animals are programmed to. And if that's done every day or multiple times a day, mitochondria has to be reshuffled, less are needed because there is a faster energy production from starch, from glucose, and we start having problems manipulating fats. And the problems then show completely different picture in the body. All the parameters of how much a triglyceride or how much cholesterol, LDL or, or HDL has to be in the blood is based on glucoholic body, on a body that does not work correctly, that is fed and supported through glucose, which in nature we don't have action or chance to find unless we cook or process the food. So once when we start giving brain regular supply of sugar, Less and less mitochondria is active. We, we become glucoholics, dependent on the glucose that we eat. And if you don't have enough of it, we start feeling sleepy. The brain cannot function. Vision becomes blurry. There's not enough electricity. Huh? You have a robot that is walking. You know, the, the Duracell bunny, if you remember that commercial. As the battery is depleted, the bunny goes slower and slower. Well, it's us too. And although the brain is low on energy and it becomes slow, the cells cannot produce more energy no matter how fat you are because you don't have enough mitochondria active. So the fat cannot not enough that it can be turned into energy. And you are depleted. So what happens? You have a snack in the morning. Children have their snack, which again is contrary to what they should have. They have freaking cereals, pure starch. So you give them cereal. And now they say even, no, no milk, you know, they are not tolerant to milk. Uh, almond milk. Almond milk is white water, has nothing to do with milk. Should never, ever be called milk. Why? Because of color? Milk, we know as a liquid that is produced by mammary gland of animals and human. The mother is going to have milk when she has a baby. That's milk. This white liquid that you buy is toxic stuff, full of starch. But because it's white, now it's milk. I think it's a, it's a gender. You know, we are going into this, we started with a gender 
way before we start impl implying it or on, on bi in biology and humans. We first started with gendering the food source. Hmm? It is milk because it's white, uh, you know, has nothing to do with milk, it's not from mammary gland. Well, it's the milk, it's white. Same goes for coconut milk. None of those are milks. They are liquids. Juices. White colored water. With some other stuff in it. Coming from a plant has nothing to do with milk. Completely different resonance. It's a plant product versus animal product. Two worlds apart. So, when you are on a frequent plant diet, your brain, your kugel doesn't work right. And this is what Anunnaki knew, and this is why they tricked humans 8,000 years ago to start using grain, eating grain, made us immediately stupid. First thing, we became stupid and easily man manipulated um, and our lifespan crashed from over 600 years to down below 200. More starch we eat, shorter lifespan we have, more sickly we become and faster. It's visible. The vegetarianism trend. This started when I was young. This is a new stuff. Veganism started, I don't know, just about uh, 30 years ago. But it was very rare. Now, vegetarian and vegan restaurants all over the place. Here in Tarapoto, a small little village in, in the jungle, and they are I don't know, six, seven or more places with vegan food. I don't know how many friends here I have vegans that came from around from Romania and Russia and France and Canada that are on a plant diet trying to get healthy. And no matter what they do, the health goes down. So it's the mental health, because when you reshuffle your body, when you switch your genetics, and now they kind of run, you're sitting on two chairs. When it's glucose available, ah, glucose produces enough energy, everything is fine. When you are not eating, because glucose is only available when you're eating, you have a storage. So when you're not eating, bingo, no, no nutrition comes. So now, yes, you have triglycerides. You have some VLDL that will bring it in. But it's a low-level VLDL because it's usually just sidekick. And it cannot supply enough. Plus, the uh, cells doesn't have enough active mitochondria. So it cannot even convert more and you are low on energy. So, it's like having used weak batteries in a Duracell bunny. And that's how you work. Just look at elderly, majority. And it goes further. They come damages, loss of memory. And, okay, so, we went with a children disease, so-called children disease, ADHD, right? Well, in grown-ups, we have exactly the same thing, but we don't call it anymore ADHD, we call it now bipolarity. Same exact thing. Only when child throw fits because it's a low in energy, so it's... Body wants to sleep, but a child doesn't want to, wants to be active. 
So you tell the child, well, you got to go to sleep. <laughs> Same, this is bipolar reaction of bipolar men. And it's like, ah, uh, doozing all because there is no energy and you tell them to do something or you complain about something. Now they have to talk. Remember, before you do any movement, you need energy. So they will get some energy from the heart and use it. But the brain is sleeping. So they go. <laughs> Same damn thing. And I proved this because every bipolar client I had, within one week, bipolarity vanishes. You just start feeding the body correctly, allow it to readjust genetically to correct food, and bipolarity is gone. Sleeping problems. The body, when we are sleeping, we are not producing thoughts, which means all the energy that heart produces, even though it produces less when you are sleeping, it still is available for body to use to actually regenerate itself. So if you have been under stress during the day and you use some glycogen during the night, the cells will replenish the glycogen. But they need energy for this. They have to hydrate and cleanse. They need energy for this. If you are sleeping, you cannot eat. Your cells have one quarter or less of mitochondria that they need to properly produce energy from fat. And they need to have much higher transportation system to bring these fats, which, your, which is your VLDL cholesterol but no no cholesterol has to be low no, that's cholesterol is bad it's gonna create heart problem it's gonna uh, clog your arteries are you crazy it does none of this and i explained why clogging happens it has nothing to do with what level of you can be very low on cholesterol and still have clogged arteries and need bypass so the level, the amount of cholesterol you will have in your blood has nothing to do with problems with clogged arteries or cardiac problems. Zilch, zero. But again, doctors are too brainwashed to think rationally because they themselves are glucoholics. And even if they switch, to carnivore diet, parameter shift. So now, <gasps> how is it possible? I feel better, but I have to lower my my, my, my uh, LDL. It's way too high. This is bad. Says who? Has the corrupt, says corrupt si uh, system of science. It's not science what they teach us. It's science. It's a, uh, soy infected science so most of the mental issues we have including the tiredness which we attribute to a mental exhaustion it is all related to inefficient supply of energy because of wrong diet. Then I explained that a great a majority of the energy comes from heart. Heart works as a spinning machine. It's your engine. It's a pump and engine. And it spreads the energy and it shoots it to the brain so brain can, brain can then distribute it through the organs 
but thoughts are transmission. So a lot of energy during the day we transmit because we think. Right now I'm transmitting like crazy. I'm not feeding my body with energy. But at night, when we are sleeping, this is not happening. So the energy that is produced is empowering body to cleanse, to hydrate, to replenish lost uh, gl uh, glycogen and repair itself. For all this it needs energy, but you don't have storage of sugar. So what is your body going to use now? Well, it is forced to use fat because you always have fat in a form of triglyceride circulating. Yeah, but you have only one quarter or less running mitochondria. So you can produce only one quarter of the needed energy. And if something in the body has to be fixed, or something has to be done, well, you are going to be awoken. Okay, you will wake up and you'll be hungry. And you go, I, I need to eat something. And you're gonna go to the fridge and you're gonna munch on your carbohydrate and instantly feel better. But the problems get deeper and deeper. Longer we are running on this faulty system more and more problems occur. We become progressively more toxic because we cannot detoxify. And then toxicity, again, impedes the brain functioning because toxic blood does not conduct electricity well. It's always low on energy. The most toxic blood have elderly and chronically ill, and they're always tired because energy doesn't flow. Electricity doesn't flow correctly. So when we think about mental issues, we always have to think about the energy source, which is electricity, which comes from heart or from ourselves producing it, and the only source of energy in our body that is readily available day and night, and even if we don't eat for days, it is still available, is fat. This is why every animal is always in ketogenic state. Every mammal is always herbivore, carnivore, omnivore. They are always in ketogenic state, with exception of human. And domestic animal we feed with the same junk that we eat, which, has, which are cooked and processed plants. We say, well, they have a protein. Their protein vibrates differently. Plants vibrate differently than animals. It's an apple and apple fly. Okay? Different things. This is why nothing from plant really serves you. Yeah, can be utilized, but it is going to take you off the proper vibration. It will make you sickly. May not happen right away. You may need 10, 15 years before you start showing problems. Sometimes longer. And I explain why some people show it faster, some people take more time. There's a clear logical explanation for it. But it's all contrary to the science we are being fed through our cathedra, to our university, schools, our colleges, no? um, movies, entertainment industry, news. It's all fake science pushed by, by Cabal, by the Rockefeller Foundation. Now, 
What, what do we do with addiction? There are only few cases where addiction is endangering your life. One of them is when you become very bad glucoholic, dependent on glucose, and you go into a problem with diabetes. And you are given synthetic insulin. Synthetic insulin will mimic real insulin, but it's not the same stuff. So what happens? It is going to cause addiction. And this type of addiction is very difficult to correct because you need insulin. And when you don't supply the one that the body got addict, uh, addicted to, it is not going to be producing its own. It's waiting for the one it is addicted to. And if you don't provide it and your blood sugar levels are high, you are in mortal danger. So this is one type of addiction. But then, much more common, the most common addiction is addiction to the wrong energy source, to sugars. Because brain is programmed to like sweet stuff. It actually accelerates metabolism just with the thought of sweet. So, what do you do if you are addicted to sweets? Or addicted to caffeine? Or addicted to some drug? To alcohol? What does it mean you are addicted? This simply means that you consciously are choosing to continue using them. But then you find excuse. Well, I'm addicted. There is no such a thing. Because none of them are supporting your life. So you can quit using them and you survive. And longer you are not using them, your body cleanses, reshuffles, adjusts, and less and less you will be looking for them. Which is very difficult with sugar, because body produces sugar. So the most addictive drug on this planet is actually sugar, in any form. Um, I mean, sweet form, like fructose. Fructose is the healthiest sugar to take, but it is addictive because of sweetness. Nectar is, wow, honey, fabulous. Maple syrup, sugarcane syrup, that's all fructose. There's no starch, it's fructose. So when they tell you, well, the honey has certain amount of fructose and certain amount of glucose, well, only the honey produced by bees that are given sugar water to drink, so they make more honey. That honey has glucose in it, and you take a drop of that honey, and if you see ants walking, you put it on their path, and they start avoiding the honey. It means it has glucose, it's toxic. Ants know not to eat that stuff. You give them natural honey, they'll be on it. Okay? No problem. So, don't tell me, well, I cannot get away from this addiction. Or, okay, Darko, I know I have to stop smoking, so when I finish this pack, it's never going to happen. Or I'm going to reduce from a one pack to half a pack, then to three cigarettes a day, two cigarettes, never going to happen. Because breaking the so-called addiction is simply making decision to stop. So if you make decision to stop, 
take the cigarettes, rip them, throw them in the garbage, and you made conscious decision not to do this anymore. Same problem I have with chocolate. After having chocolate every day for seven years, when I decided to stop with that experiment because my body fell actually apart. I got so dehydrated that every bone started clicking in my body. So, and shoulder pain, knee pain, uh, teeth again started rotting. Okay? Cacao, because the, cho the chocolate I was using, I'm here in chocolate country in Peru. Everybody around me is making, well, is harvesting cacao and making cacao powder and making chocolates almost in every corner. And then we sweeten them with honey, natural honey from wild bees. And then we make also uh, liquid cacao, cacao drink. And still, my body got destroyed because cacao is toxic. This is for all these experts out there, the supplement pushers that talk about cacao being superfood, full of antioxidants. All this rhetoric is bullshit. So, addiction like this is a conscious decision of to do or not to do certain things. Once when you know that coffee is bad, chocolate is bad, cigarettes are bad, plants as a food are bad idea. Once when you know, you can stop your addiction, consciously deciding, okay, that's it. I'm not going to eat that anymore. Well, you will have craving. But same thing is with generally eating. You can go fasting and yes, you will be very hungry first two days, maybe three days. And then hunger goes away because your cells now start producing the correct amount of energy using your fat. But the idea of eating, addiction to the food, is still on. And it takes good two weeks of not eating anything to break this addiction. And then you can go on, not eating. The only thing is that your body is designed to show that it will deteriorate if you don't feed it. It's a program, it has nothing to do with quantum reality. It's our physical programming of the robot. So we have to eat, but then eat correctly and you, you remain healthy. Everybody heals during post, during fasting. So addictions to drugs, to nicotine, to uh, coffee, caffeine, chocolate, they don't exist. It's a conscious decision. You may be misled, not knowing, but once when you know, it's your conscious decision. Do you want to do it or not do it? And because you like it, you find excuse. Well, I'm addicted. I cannot help myself. If you say so, you are what you say you are. But it's not real addiction. It's just choice, choice you make. To cope with this kind of addiction, it's always easy to have a crutch. And crutch could be finding interest in something that you really have to do and focus on it. And this way, you have no time to focus on your desires. You are focused on something, you are doing something that you love to do. Everything else becomes secondary. This I always recommend to people in a healing process. Um, 
being addicted, crossed fingers, addicted to certain things, depends on the strength of your will. This is why groups like Alcoholic Anonymous, where each other supports, and, okay, and that keeps you uh, with the thought of being careful, because you know, ah, tonight I have to be on a meeting, I cannot have alcohol. So it keeps you focused, not having it. But I was alcoholic and I didn't need anything because I made a conscious decision. And I was experimenting with a blood electrification, which in that case, you, she really cannot have any alcohol in the body. And uh, it took me, uh, day by day, it took me uh, one month to completely break the addiction. I did not need alcohol anymore, even though I had alcohol in the house. And I still have alcohol in the house because people come and occasionally we celebrate something. So I make myself gin martini or a glass of good aged rum or cognac. I enjoy it. But maybe two, three times a year. Lately, I was uh, messing up with many things and uh, I had a little bit of spritzer, dil diluted white wine, diluted with a bubbly water, one to one. Small level of alcohol, but still, it doesn't allow me to cleanse and hydrate on cellular level. So we have, every one of us has, is fighting some of those demons. But again, don't tell me, well, I'm addicted. I, I, can you help me? Make conscious decision. Don't drag it. Don't say, okay, I'm going to reduce. Reducing doesn't work. When I'm overweight and I want to lose some weight, if I make decision, okay, I'm going to eat only strictly once a day, only meat, low fat, it never works. Because when I eat, then I feel hungry because this doesn't fill my stomach. And then I'm really uh, looking, okay, what can I nibble on? So if I want to lose weight, I buy the bullet. I say, okay, I'm going to fast. And I'm going to fast until my weight is not what I want it to be. It usually takes about 10 days to two weeks. My weight drops where I want it. Usually I always have to lose like three kilos. And then I start eating slowly, but then I start eating clean food. Because you feel light, you feel fabulous. You don't want to spoil it and feel again like a bag of garbage. And as long as I'm eating raw animal products, I stay vibrant, motivated, sharp. As soon as I have hard boiled eggs or uh, overcooked chicken, my body immediately goes like, eh. like I use somebody's used batteries. Immediately. Hmm. Try it for yourself. Remember everything we, we know that we have heard it's lie. Doesn't matter who tells it. It's lie. No, maybe what I'm saying is lie. Try it. We only learn through experiences. So have your experience. If you have a mental problems, go on self healers protocol, which will teach you how to hydrate and eat correctly which will cleanse you, make you very, very electroconductive, and most likely all your symptoms of mental dysfunction are going to be lost. Now, yes, you may have uh, problems with emotions. This is different bag of worms. And fear we have to conquer. 
it's all based on fear. Again, toxic brain is more fearful than the one that runs on full power. And what makes you fearful is information. You have a wrong programs running. They have to be cleansed. Maybe it will require some meditation, some hoponopono, asking for forgiveness, giving forgiveness, turning back to the source. Prayer, if you want to call it. But there is always a way. Medicating is never the correct way. And if sometimes has to be done to calm down the symptoms, instead of using all the chemical toxic baloney, yeah, use a little bit of hemp in the form of the oil. You need just one drop. It will calm you perfectly. It will calm you without making you sleepy. Because it just fills the receptors. So, CBD oil, you can use it. But again, don't use it as a recreational drug. This is used as emergency. It's a suppression mechanism. But go and work on yourself. Cleanse the stuff out. Thank you for listening. Till next time. Love you all. God bless you. Namaste.